Hi, Jono here. Yeah. Today's video, I want you to just go over the intrusion detection system in OpenSense. So it is split into two main components. So the first is the intrusion detection itself. So this detects traffic based on rule sets. And then the second component is the intrusion prevention. So this will block the traffic depending on the policies that you create. Um, just a warning, a lot of people think this is a set and forget system. It is definitely not. So especially in the beginning, um, when you first set it up, you need to go over it daily and then configure the system um, as new detections are found. Okay, to explain how it works in very basic terms, the rules is what the RDS uses to detect the specific traffic. This is the base of the system. From the rule, you have policies. Now, the policy is what the RPS uses to know if it needs to block or drop traffic or alert you. So, when you download a rule set, the rule and the policy is usually included in the set, so you don't need to set the policy up. From there, you get a policy adjustment. Now that is what you, the user, will be editing. So the policy adjustment is, if you're not happy with the original policy that comes with the rule set, you can then adjust it. By default, the policy is usually set to just alert you. So if a rule is enabled, the poli policy is, if RDS detects us, just tell the RPS to send an alert from there you can then adjust that policy to say if you want to drop the traffic or if you don't need that specific rule you can then go and disable it so you have the rule is the base the policy works on top of the rule then your policy adjustment works on top of the policy and then that ends up being your final rule that is used in the RDS RPS system. So you can see it as an additive process. Since the process is additive, so if a rule set, for example, updates rules, it will not affect your policy. So let's say, for example, there was a rule that would change Facebook on HTTP, and now Facebook doesn't use HTTP anymore. They update the rule to block Facebook on HTTPS. Since the rule is updated, it does not affect the policy or the policy adjustment. So whenever you do your editing, you always do the editing here. In that way, this, the changes from the policy and the rules, if it's updated by the rule set, will not be changed. So the first thing we need to do before we can install it or um, enable it, you need to make sure that all hardware offloading is disabled. So by default, OpenSense has it disabled, so you should be fine. But if not, you must just uh, tick all the boxes, and then once you've saved it, you will need to restart OpenSense for it to apply. From there, we'll go into um, services, intrusion detection, and then the administration. From there, we'll enable it. We'll enable the RPS mode, so that's the intrusion prevention system. And then we'll also enable um, promiscuous mode. In the next cut that I go to, you'll see that I've enabled syslogs alerts. You do not need to enable that. I've just enabled it as I might use it in the future. I want to talk about the pattern matcher. So the default matcher that OpenSense uses is actually the AHO Corsic. But if you have any sort of modern CPU, and to be honest, most CPUs, um, you can set it to hyperscan. But if this does not work for you, you can try the others. For interfaces, my general rule is you choose interfaces that has a possibility of being an attack vector. So in other words, if you're opening ports on your WAN, so let's say you're doing port forwarding for a camera system or you're doing a reverse proxy and you're opening port 80 and 443 to the public, you will want to have those interfaces included. 
So in this case, I want all local interfaces enabled so that the RDS and IPS can check traffic on all local connections and on the WAN connections in case in the future I would like to do hosting or any ports to be open to the public. Under the home networks, you'll see at the moment that it's the 192 networks, 10 networks, and then the 172 networks. Now, if we go back to the dashboard quickly, we'll see that I'm using the 172 networks for WAN connections. So I will need to take that off. So if we quickly go back, I will need to remove that network from the home networks. And that's pretty much all we need to do. From there we can apply. The next thing we need to do is download rule sets. So by default, OpenSense has a lot of rule sets that you can enable and download. So I want to show you, uh, or I'm going to use the social media rule set for a specific reason, as it's easy to show you or to check that the IDS is working. But I also just want to show you what happens when using this or possible um, outcome so we can just tick it and then at the top click enable we can apply it and then we can download the rule set once the rule set has downloaded if we go to rules we'll see all the rules that it has downloaded so you can see by default all of them are disabled so if you want to enable just a single rule you can just check the right and enable it or in this case one enable or we can check the all checkbox Click the little tick uh, checkbox at the bottom and click apply. However, if we try to go to Facebook, you'll see that we don't get access to the page and no alerts are popping up. If we go look at the rules, we'll see that we have enabled the rules. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this is because in a previous uh, video, we created or enabled block list, DNS block list. So if we check my list, you'll see that Facebook is one of them that in, uh, is enabled. So the unbound has already returned a 000 IP address for Facebook. So in that sense, our browser isn't even reaching Facebook yet. So for this tutorial or this video, I'm just going to disable block list for now. Okay, so if we go back to alerts and we test it now. And you'll see if I go to Facebook, it will now load. And if I refresh alerts, you'll see now all the alerts are showing up. I'm just making sure if you're using uh, IDS and IPS to block DNS requests, for example, just make sure if you think it's not working, just check the block list. Okay, so now for the RPS part, if we click on a specific one, so example, we'll do the DNS requests, we click on the little pencil, we can then change the action to drop. Once we've done that, we need to go to rules and we need to reapply the rules. What this will do is it will create a policy for that specific rule. So this policy will then adjust the rule to say that instead of alerting it must drop it so you can see the SRD if we go to our rules and we look for that exact SRD you'll see it's now set or shows as drop since our policy is overriding the the rule set itself and so if we go back to alerts and we test it again We'll refresh Facebook and we should see under the alerts that it should say block now. So it is blocking that DNS request. If we check out our previous ones, you'll see that it was allowed. Now since we've changed the policy of it to now block, it will now block. So since again Opera is quite aggressive with its caching, if we go and clear the cache, we re-log into OpenSense. We can now try refresh uh, Facebook, for example, and it should not load.
So now it will just load forever. If we go back, we should see, if we refresh, we should see alert that again the uh, DNS for Facebook is still being blocked. So it's correct, it is working. Okay, so Facebook isn't loading, that's working. So we can go now back to the alert. And we will change the policy from drop back to alert. So now it will allow that traffic through again. And it will send us, or it will show an alert. So we'll change it to alert. Apply it. And now if we refresh the page, it should load. There we go. And if we check the alerts again, you'll see now that the DNS is allowed to Facebook. So I want to just talk about rule sets. So there's a lot of nice uh, rule sets available to you. But what I recommend is the Pro Editions. If we go to OpenSense uh, shop site, and then we click on software, you'll see there's the ET Pro Edition. Now, what this is, you will get the Pro um, rule sets, but as payment, you'll obviously be sending them telemetry of your of the alerts and attacks and so on and so forth. If you don't want that, you can buy an actual pro subscription. So you can just read over the end user license agreements and all of that to see if you're happy with it. So on their site, once you have added it to cart and created an account and so on and so forth, they'll send you uh, an email with your access code. From there to install it, you go under system, firmware, and then plugins. Under plugins, you'll find there's a plugin called OS-ET-Pro-Telemetry. You can install that by clicking the plus button next to it. What that will do is install a widget. It will install their licensing kind of system, and then it will also install their rule sets to OpenSense. So if we go to dashboard, we can then add the widget. So basically what their widget is, it will just give you a quick overview of if your license is happy, so if it's working, and then the last time that it has uh, downloaded any new updates from it. So since I haven't put in the license yet, the, the access token, uh, nothing will pop up yet. Okay, if we go back to services, intrusion detection, and under the download tab, you'll see at the bottom, this is where you'll paste your access key that or access token that they have sent to you. Um, once that is done, you can click save, and then it will now be licensed to use that data. In the list, you'll then see a whole lot of rule sets called ET telemetry. You can then go and enable all the ones that you would like. What I want to show you is how it looks. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to download some of the rule sets. And you'll see the nice thing about these the ET rule sets is a lot of them are pre-configured. So once you have downloaded them and you go to rules, you'll see that all the important rules are enabled by default. And then rules that aren't really used that much, they will be disabled by default. So you'll see on the first page, there's only one rule that's enabled. The next page, you'll see that it's all disabled. Page three, it's all disabled. And page four, there's four that is, is enabled. So you can, if you want, go and uh, enable all of them or the ones that you want. But uh, in general, they have pre-configured it so that the important ones or the ones that are used the most nowadays are pre-enabled. Yeah, just a reminder that again all rule sets will always be set to alert by default. 
Okay, the last thing you need to do is under the schedules tab, if you click on there, this will bring up a, a menu for you to create a cron job and this cron job will go and update the rules for you. So if there's any new rules, it will go and download it. So you can just enable it and you can leave the default. So that is once a day, each night it will go and check if there's any new rule sets and download them. And that's it. If this helped you, please like and subscribe. I would appreciate it. It will help grow the channel. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.